Every 10 years, there's a big star. And there was Elvis in the 50s and the Beatles in the 60s. And now's the time. And that was two years ago. And nothing has happened. New group called Big Star and their album number one record. A lot of excitement about this album. Those two were a couple of shooting stars. Jody and I were caught up in the bow wave of Chris and Alex. They were just unbelievably great. Those records were as good as any records on earth. To me, becoming a big star is almost like talking about the Beatles or the Stones or Led Zeppelin. We could have been jinxing our future by calling ourselves Big Star and our first album number one record. Let's have a big hand for Big Star. This is the Rock Riders convention. They had a bunch of rock critics dancing, which is beyond a miracle. Rolling Stone says this is the greatest stuff we've ever heard, and you can't find it in a record store. They didn't last for very long, and they didn't tour very much. He couldn't find anybody who would support his music. I'm sure that was a factor in his emotional problems. That left Alice kind of on his own. I think there was a certain kind of self-destructiveness. He was an anti-star. It seemed like Alex had sabotaged himself all the time. You keep buying them, I'll keep signing them. <laughs> Hey, There's a sadness to it because those are some of the best records in that decade, and they just didn't get heard. Thank you, friends. It was too individual. It was too Memphis. Nevertheless, it changed music. In the 90s, it was established that Big Star were great. Everybody feels pain. Not everybody turns that into that kind of art. Real authentic pain, real authentic loneliness, things that would become alternative music 20 years later. Sometimes lack of success forces you deeper within yourself. And that is the best thing about the Big Star story. Yeah.